Good morning. This is Eureka John with Eureka Street Crypto Hub broadcasting live on, uh, what is it, May 2nd, 2021 at 5.07 in the morning from Leander, Texas, suburb just outside of Austin. And uh, yeah, this is, my, this is my video blog. And uh, welcome to it if this is your first time here. And uh, my name is Eureka John, like I just said. And um, basically, I jump on every single morning to talk about my journey in this crypto world. I am by no means a professional or some kind of teacher or financial advisor or anything like that. Um, I probably know less about crypto than you do if you're watching this. But I'm documenting my journey learning through this. And by documenting this stuff, I A, have been not bugging my friends and family about crypto and then B um, been able to uh, get value out of the comments and feedback that I've received from people to uh, either be able to help people out or they've helped me out with their comments and suggestions or and sometimes I you know a lot of times I say things out of left field and completely uh, incorrect and cockamamie type of crap but uh, people tell me and uh, I learn and I you know, make notes on the, the comments and I correct myself and that's just the way it goes. So I appreciate it. And I'm on episode 130, um, probably a little bit more. There was a few episodes that didn't get counted, but I started doing this October 24th, 2020. And then I've tried to figure out what times worked best for me. And now I am broadcasting every morning, um, usually around five or six in the morning, sometimes a little later. Um, but, uh, yeah, I haven't missed a day since February 6th and I'm seeing how long I can keep this streak going. Um, so here I am and I have two formats. I have the morning show and then I have my project oriented videos and you happen to have stumbled upon, if this is your first time, one of my project oriented videos, uh, morning show, I just cover basically a little bit of the news and, uh, just whatever I had read the night before or the day before and stuff like that. And, um, you know, maybe touch on a project but the uh, project oriented videos are when I feel particularly inspired to dig a little deeper into a project and uh, you know try to find out a little more details about it and stuff like that so that's basically what this is and th I chose Komodo for this one and the reason I chose Komodo is because Komodo is um, an interesting blockchain that the pirate chain was built on and if you didn't see my last video my last project oriented video was covering the pirate chain which is uh, to me, I think it's probably the most secure privacy blockchain out there. So, uh, and I got a good reception from the pirate chain community. And then uh, what the pirate chain is built on, or it, eh, it's not really built on, it's built on uh, the Zcash type of blockchain. But uh, uh, it is, it uses Komodo for its security. So uh, I thought that was interesting. And then I started digging into Komodo and Komodo is part of this blockchain BPSAA society, I think is what it's called. And uh, I'll look into that here in a second. And uh, it's kind of a consortium or a group of uh, blockchains and projects and companies that have all gotten together in order to uh, band together kind of in a nonprofit way to bring awareness and uh, push forward the advancement of privacy in the blockchain world. So, uh, because privacy is becoming an, a more ever important issue with the advent and the uh, proliferation of this uh, surveillance state that we're dealing with, especially with this great reset coming up where we're told we're gonna own nothing and be happy. <laughs> so, uh, it's more important than ever. And Komodo is 100% behind uh, privacy and security in the blockchain world and uh, being able to um, help people create alternative economies around this. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so this is uh, my little cover page, but let me get to the web page here. Let's see here. And the reason I chose this camera and kind of the, the underlying thing behind it is this is Bitcoin, which uh, the Komodo chain uses. This is a Komodo chain right here. And these are several site uh, alternate chains that can be built using the Komodo security and the Komodo security gets notarized. Uh, it notarizes itself onto the Bitcoin chain for extra layer of security, which I'll get into all that. But and then here's me taking a snapshot of that, just like the Komodo chain takes itself a little snapshot and puts it on the Bitcoin chain for notarization. So, yeah, just a little uh, 
uh, insight into why I chose to do it that way. Um, anyway, so here we go. Let's see here. Komodo Platform 101. The reason I'm starting with this and not necessarily the website is because the website, although it is pretty good, um, it has some news and ways to get involved and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't really just jump out at the very beginning of the web page on the splash page and tell you what Komodo is about. Um, so, you know, uh, I want to be the first to say I am not affiliated with Komodo in any way, shape, or form. I'm not paid by anybody. I'm not a shill. Um, I'm coming from this from a third party perspective. I don't know anybody on the Komodo team. I haven't talked to anybody on the Komodo team. I briefly just checked with them on the Discord just to see if there's anything that is uh, not on the website that I should maybe be aware of before I make a video. And they're basically like, no, nah, just go to the website. So, um, all right. So, yeah. So, that's that being said, here's their website. I've gone on here and their splash page, it doesn't have. Komodo 101, you know, like, what is it? Um, it just basically tells how to get involved and some news and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, and it talks about their wallets and their decks. And then here's a Komodo handbook. Um, everything you need to know. Um, let's take a quick look at this Komodo handbook. And, um, ta-da! Komodo handbook, what is Komodo? Um, you found a community, okay, a handbook overview. Beliefs and values, okay. Uh, anything is possible. Where there's a will, there's a way. Everyone is welcome. Anyone can be behind the keyboard and you may remain anonymous. We remain accessible to all the people and where you come from or who you are doesn't matter. Collaboration is vital. Vital Opportunities are everywhere. We're all creators, find your path and never give up. High level overview. Komodo is a community oriented blockchain project for passionate, dedicated and friendly tech enthusiasts. The Komodo community helps shape a future of our technology initiatives, marketing efforts and overall strategy. Okay, uh, KMD is a native cryptocurrency of Komodo community. It is a sovereign, self, a sovereign, secure and scalable coin that represents our community values and aspirations. Open source technologies enable developers to create robust Cross-protocol DeFi applications such as multi-chain wallets, DEXs, and mar marketplaces. Uh, we also provide the technical infrastructure for anyone to launch sovereign blockchains with no programming required. Um, Komodo's Atomic DEX is a non-custodial uh, multi-coin wallet and an integrated Atomic DEX rolled into one app. Atomic DEX is available on all device platforms and provides the widest cross-chain capabilities for trustless trading in the entire blockchain. Uh, so. Um, you know, it tells basically, yeah, some of the technologies, the atomic decks, delayed proof of work. So it kind of, you know, um, this part does, you know, give you a little bit of the quick facts. Um, so yeah, this is good right here. Um, I have to admit, I did not really see this part right here, um, off of the first bet, but, uh, I did receive an email when I signed up for the Komodo newsletter and this is, uh, exactly what I needed. Um, when was the Komodo project started? The foundational idea for Komodo platform was born on February 21st, 2016, when James JL or JI 777 Lee published his Declaration of Independence. Here's the Declaration of Independence. We, the asset holders, hereby declare our independence from any single blockchain. An open and jointly developed specification on cross chain atomic asset transfers will be developed. Any current or future blockchain is invited to join. And each blockchain will not need will need to not only promise protections for asset holder interests, they need to live up to them. Otherwise, all the assets will simply move to blockchains that do. This is an interop standards effort, and it needs to be blockchain agnostic and asset centric. Um, so that is the Declaration of Independence. Komodo is kind of an OG blockchain. Um, back in 2016 is when it was founded, and let's see, it was uh, yeah, I mean, five years ago in blockchain world. That's ancient. So. Um, uh, it's kind of ahead of its time. Um, they saw that uh, blockchains need to be um, interoperable. Um, it needs to offer protections for the asset holders' interests, and they need to live up to it. Um, so, yeah, that's, those are two very important things. Um, what exactly does this mean? Okay, so Bitcoin. I'm going to. I'm assuming that you guys don't really have that much knowledge of blockchain in general, and then you may you know, know a little bit about Bitcoin and possibly a little bit about Ethereum. So here's where the stance I'm going to take on that. Um, I'll explain a lot of these basic concepts as I go along. Um, 
Bitcoin is a transactional currency. It is the OG. It is the original. It is uh, what Satoshi Noko developed to help subvert the banking system and to uh, allow people to be free from the shackles of the credit system. Um, and it, you know, it's slow. It's really secure. It is the most highly secure network out there. And um, it started the whole thing. You know, um, it is the Model T Ford. It, it completely created a new paradigm shift. And then later on um, comes Ethereum with an added feature. It's uh, the smart contracts that can be built on top because Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts. Well, what is a smart contract? It is basically an automated piece of code that uh, sits in the code of the blockchain and um, it allows a decision to be made or some kind of algorithm to be run for something to get done on it besides just a transaction. Okay, so say you have uh, like Uniswap is a perfect example, and that is a decentralized exchange in which two people can uh, go onto the exchange, and there is an automated market maker in which people provide um, one of each type of coin in equal amounts for a liquidity pool, and then there are smart contracts on there that allow one person to go on there and say, hey, I have this stable coin, USDC, I would like to trade that. For Ethereum, um, you know, uh, I'm going to do this, and then it goes in there, and with the smart contracts, it initiates that process automatically without any type of intermediary. Nobody needs a credit system or anything like that. Then there's other ones, DeFi lending protocols that are completely automated, um, that kind of act as a way for people to deposit and save and earn interest, and then for people to borrow against their assets and there's no intermediary needed. All this is done with smart contracts and it's automated online. No credit system is needed. Nobody needs to sign on it. Nobody needs to, to check into your credit history or anything like that. It's all done automatically. And there's no such thing as a qualified investor. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, hold on, got my cracky crack drink. I got my banana in the morning. It was a little early. I recorded this twice yesterday, and uh, I just didn't feel happy with it. I was just, uh, I just wasn't in a state of mind. My mind was elsewhere. I was dealing with the kids and stuff like that. So here I am at 5 in the morning again. Okay. Did Komodo have an ICO? Yes. Komodo held an ICO that lasted over one month, from October 15th to November 20th of 2016. It was sold at a rate of 0 .00012908222 Bitcoin per coin or 7,747 KMD for one Bitcoin at that time. 100 million KMD coins were issued with 70% of the KMD swapped to BTCD holders, 20% uh, sold to investors, and the remaining 10% held as working capital for Komodo's development and marketing. Over the course of the ICO, Komodo platform raised a total of 2,639 BTC, Bitcoin, closing price of Bitcoin on November 20, 2016 was 731.03. So we see Komodo raised a total of 1.9 million, basically. Um, the Bitcoin raised in the ICO is primarily used to pay Bitcoin transaction fees for the necessary for a delayed proof of work mechanism to function. So I'll get into that. That is one of the main features of Komodo is a uh, for the security aspect. Because uh, a lot of pro, uh, a lot of other blockchains, including Pirate Chain, use Komodo for their security because young blockchains are very susceptible to what's called a 51% attack, and that is basically a hack in which 51% of the network is taken over, and somebody can use that network for malicious purposes to try to pad their own pockets full of money and basically destroy the the blockchain. So uh, Komodo uses a delayed proof of work mechanism, which basically notarizes transactions on the blockchain, uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain. So it needs Bitcoin transaction fees in order to be able to do that. So uh, other other blockchains like Pirate Chain use the Komodo chain as their delayed proof of work as a service type of package for their security to be able to create a secure blockchain. So anybody can create a secure blockchain from day one if they use Komodo's delayed proof of work mechanism as their security function. And nobody wants to put their money into something that is not secure. So if you have a new blockchain and you can instantly advertise that you're 100% secure with the Komodo blockchain delayed proof of work mechanism, I mean, that's a really good selling point, all right? So anyway, uh, what are the specific specifications of Komodo blockchain? Block time, one minute. 
block size, four megabyte max. Consensus, proof of work. Proof of work is not proof of stake. They're two different types of consensus mechanisms and consensus, consensus mechanisms are basically with all the nodes of a blockchain agree it because it's fully distributed and not centralized in any one place. And once they all agree on a transaction that yes, this transaction happened, then they all write it to their own copies of the blockchain. And there's tons of different copies of the blockchains out there. So nobody can just shut down one node and expect to uh, take down an entire network. So it is a way to safeguard something. And proof of work and proof of weight stake are two different ways to do it. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole today. Um, just know that Komodo blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain, right now Ethereum 1.0, all these are proof of work blockchains. And we're talking about proof of work blockchains today, not proof of stake. Uh, um, okay, and then the algorithm is Equihash. Um, you don't really need no more than that for now. Current KMD supply is approximately 117 million. Total KMD supply, approximately 20 million, 200 million, and, we'll, and it will be reached in the year 2030. Uh, transaction fees are 0 0.001 KMD. Third party wallets may impose additional fees. So uh, the transaction fees are really, really small. Uh, so <laughs> that's a really good thing for you know somebody not wanting to spend a bunch on transaction fees. Nobody wants to spend a bunch on transaction fees. The only people that want people to spend a bunch on transaction fees are the miners. So um, anyway. What does KMD accomplish? Since the Komodo mainnet went live in January 2017, Komodo has consistently made one enormous development after the other. Komodo is the most industry, most industry's most advanced composable blockchain platform. What does that mean? All right. Well, let's go back to the website here. Um, all right. Yeah. Sorry, I gave you guys a hard time for not immediately finding the, uh, um, you know, Komodo rundown, the little summary, um, but. Anyway, here's the developer tab up here, and you scroll down, and uh, let's see here, Komodo Core Technologies Blockchain Composer coming soon, and basically what it's supposed to be, if I understand correctly, from what I've read, um, almost like a GUI, a, drag, a GUI, graphical user interface mechanism to be able to drag and drop and basically create your own blockchain within a matter of, of second that's 60 they say 60 seconds I, if somebody knew probably longer um if you know what you're doing maybe 60 seconds um but um yeah so you can create your own blockchain really easily and it's going to be extremely secure using this delayed proof of work um mechanism so yeah um uh, i mean okay let me bring in the arc blockchain is another type of blockchain they pride themselves on being the wordpress of blockchains i mean could this kind of be a, that as well um, using a different type of security um it would be interesting to do kind of a compare contrast between komodo and arc blockchain um, and just kind of compare the two different ways of doing it i believe arc is proof of stake so it might be kind of the same concept based on proof of stake instead of proof of work um, and but this uses Bitcoin as the extra level security where Arc blockchain uses a delegated proof of stake network. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to put these side by side and just to kind of see because they both kind of seem in a way like they can be proof uh, uh, WordPress of blockchains where you can basically anybody that doesn't know code can go in there and create their own blockchains. Just my little take on that. Um, but yeah. Um, so let me just explain really quick. Yes, so there's blockchain 1.0, which is Bitcoin, blockchain 2.0, which is uh, Ethereum, now blockchain 3.0. And, and then this is where it enters things like Komodo, Arc, uh, Cosmos blockchain. And there are, uh, I think there are four different features that are necessary for a blockchain. There's transaction speed, there's uh, security, there's privacy, and there's interoperability. And... Uh, um, Bitcoin obviously is the king of security. Um, obviously Bitcoin is not the king of transaction speed. Um, so there are ways to, oh yeah, scalability. Did I say that? So speed, security, privacy, privacy, uh, scalability and interoperability. There's five of them. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of put privacy and security almost in the same thing, like privacy slash security. I guess you could have... Uh, security without privacy uh, because Bitcoin is secure but it's not really private it started out private 
Um, but then now with chain analysis and everything out there and people being able to track specific Bitcoin addresses and stuff like that, it's not really that private anymore because it's all open and out there. Um, but you can't have uh, privacy without security. So, um, I don't know, interesting debate. So uh, it'd be interesting to hear somebody's uh, opinion of that. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm not a teacher or an educator. I'm asking just as many questions as you guys on all this. All right, so anyway, yeah, so there's security, privacy, uh, speed, scalability, and interoperability. And I believe that Komodo basically addresses all these things. Um, Pirate Chain takes the privacy aspect and kicks it up a notch and uh, uses um, the Zcash platform, ZK Snarks and all that. I don't see that Komodo is doing this, but anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so let's take a quick look at uh, delayed proof of work here and uh, see what the deal is. Um, 51% attack, security, delayed proof of work. That is one of the main features of the Komodo chain. All right, so uh, bit blockchain security is often inadequate. Um, Komodo's technology vision is anchored to the four pillars of blockchain technology. What are their four pillars? Security, scalability, interoperability, and adaptability. Okay, so there's differed from my little five pillars, but uh, yeah, this is good too. Uh, the post will explain Komodo's innovative delayed proof of work security mechanism and its corresponding blockchain security service. Um, in the blockchain industry, security is the most important aspect for any project or business. If a blockchain isn't secure, it's simply a matter of time before it gets hacked. Um, over the last few years, there's been a number of successful attacks recently that demonstrate this point. This includes some major projects that sit in the top 100 coins, According to market cap value, Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum Classic, and Verge, to name a few, have all fallen victim to hackers. And here's just a quick little list. Now, I know since 2019, Ethereum Classic, after that, there have been a lot of different type of 51% uh, attacks as well. Um, they can also happen on proof-of-stake mechanisms in its own way. Uh, Sybil attacks, basically somebody uh, buying more than 51% of the value of the blockchain in order to be able to buy their way into it. But uh, for this uh, proof of work, you have to take um, over 51% of the blockchain hash power since it's based on hash power. Um, so um, here's the anatomy of it. Um, very simply put, a 51% attack occurs when malicious actors gain control of more than 50% of a blockchain's peer-to-peer -peer network hash rate, hence the, names, hence the name. Since the attackers have at least 51% of the network's hash rate, they can force the rest of the network to erase blocks that contain their transactions. This means attackers can maliciously use their majority power to spend tokens, uh, coins more than once. Um, attacks of this nature are also called double spend attacks because the attackers are able to spend their coin coins or tokens twice and then they sell the counterfeit currency for profit. They line their pockets because they own most of the network. Sounds like a monopoly. It sounds like Microsoft. <laughs> Is it worth knowing, uh, noting that only blockchains using a proof of work consensus mechanism are so susceptible to 51% attacks? Um, like I said, that this can also be done on proof of stake, but it maybe is not exactly the same as 51% attacks because they aren't taking the hash power, they're buying up the, uh, the tokens. Um, this is true because cryptocurrency mining is open to everyone and attackers can join a POW uh, blockchain network with a massive amount of hash to gain control of the network and thus the ledger. Uh, blockchains that use proof of stake consensus mechanisms, so here's my point, are vulnerable to a similar variety of attack called a nothing at stake attack. However, nothing at stakes attack are distinct from 51% attacks. Okay, so yeah, uh, the most popular blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum are not at risk at 51% attacks despite both being proof of work. This is true because they gaining more than 50% of either network's hash rate is not feasible. Even the largest mining pools are not uh, close to attaining majority of power of these networks because they're just so huge. Uh, that's why Bitcoin is so secure and why Komodo uses Bitcoin for its notary for its delayed proof of work. Uh, one blockchain, uh, instead a bad actor, okay, so uh, blockchains with smaller networks like beginning blockchains um, and if you're trying to sell them on your blockchain, <laughs> you got to sell them on the security, they're, but they're vulnerable because uh, they haven't, don't, haven't created all the distributed nodes yet all over the place. An attacker wouldn't even need to invest the money into purchasing the hardware to overpower a small network. Instead, a bad actor could simply rent the hash power needed from a place like NiceHash. Um, I guess you can rent a lot of the equipment and use their equipment in order to, uh, to run 
to mine. Uh, one blockchain enthusiast even created this website to show how vulnerable many blockchains are. Uh, let's take a quick look just to see. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go like deep into it or anything, but um, uh, so yeah, 51% attack cost. It shows how much it would cost to uh, to overtake that and how much hash rate you would need. It. And some of these you wouldn't need very much. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I'll, I'll put all this stuff in the uh, and uh, the video description. I always put my links in the video description so you can go take a look for yourself. Um, so anyway, that's getting ahead of myself. So anyway, so what Co Komodo uses is a delayed proof of work mechanism. Um, basically, Komodo's delayed proof of work mechanism, it recycles the hash rate of the Bitcoin network to protect all integrated blockchains um, and to an equal level of security. Uh, this is made possible by storing backups of individual blocks onto the decentralized ledger of the blockchain, including Bitcoin itself. The process of storing backups of individual blocks onto another blockchain's ledger is called notarization. Uh, Komodo's decentralized network of 64 notary nodes carries out the technical work required to successfully complete notarizations. Each year, the 32 top performing notary nodes are automatically re-elected to reward the diligence and ensure continuity in the peer-to-peer -peer network. The other 32 notary node positions are decided at the ballot by the Komodo community in an annual stake-weighted election. They just had one and they added five more nodes here um, uh, recently. I'll show that to you here in a second. Um, Komodo's notary node network uses a command in the Bitcoin script called the op return to complete notarizations. This op return command allows a small amount of data to be saved directly onto the Bitcoin ledger with a special transaction. The transaction requires payment of one ordinary transaction fee, so that's why it needed the Bitcoin and the uh, ICO in order to be able to, uh, to, to start off because it needs Bitcoin for the transaction fees. But it doesn't actually move funds from one address to another. Instead, an op return transaction is made specifically to save a small amount of data onto the Bitcoin ledger. So it finds a little bit of space from the recycled hash power on the Bitcoin blockchain, and it kind of creates its own little stamp um, and uh, its own little copy of a certain block uh, on the on the um, Bitcoin blockchain of the Komodo's uh, blockchain ledger to uh, kind of verify it and. Uh, create proof that it was there so nobody could hack in and if they did hack in they could only go back so far to that point where it's notarized on the bitcoin blockchain so yeah it's like uh you have big brother over here standing behind you you know and if you mess with with little timmy on the playground big brother's right there bitcoin and uh, you don't want to mess with little timmy or otherwise you're gonna get the wrath of big brother back there um, so uh, delayed proof of work process security it works as follows the notary node network saves a block hash from every delayed proof of work protected chain onto the komodo chain uh, block hashes are taken from blocks roughly 10 minutes old ensuring that each chain's decentralized network has confirmed that those blocks are true and valid uh, this is this or this is ordinary blockchain consensus as it works on anything then the notary nodes save a block hash from the Komodo chain onto the Bitcoin chain. And since a block hash from every delayed proof of work secured chain is already stored on the Komodo chain, this single notarization extends to not just Komodo, but every chain using Komodo for its block delayed proof of work security. Uh, finally, the notary node performs back notarizations to all delayed proof of work protected chains. This informs each individual network that a successful notarization was completed and identifies which block was notified, notarized. At that point, networks will not accept any changes to a notarized block or any blocks that preceded it. After a notarization is completed, delayed proof of work secured chains cannot be re reorganized beyond the most recently notarized block. In other words, the history of every chain using delayed proof of work security becomes totally immutable once notarization is complete. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it happens every 10 minutes, and uh, this provides a constant and extremely high level of security to all delayed proof of work protected chains. Such hackers would need to overpower the Bitcoin network in order to destroy the notarized block hashes before they could disrupt or alter uh, any blockchain using delayed proof of work security. Um, so it kind of can act as a delayed proof of work. Uh, uh, as a service because uh, everything is as a service nowadays um, it, pe people can basically hire Komodo chain to be their delayed proof of work as a service and so they are doing that um, 
So yeah, it's available to any UTXO based blockchain and I don't want to go into the difference between UTXO and account based blockchains right now because that's a whole different subject. But just know that Bitcoin is a UTXO based blockchain. Um, it's a, uh, I think it's an unspent transaction output is what UTXO stands for. Um, so yeah, um, so there's that. And uh, let me just give you a little glimpse into uh, this demo just so I can show you. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, where is it? Um, learn more about us, join the community. Let's see here, explore. Uh, whoops. And history and ethos. Okay. Um, Yes, the demo is right here on the front page. I don't even know how I missed it. Okay, but basically I will start this demo just so you can see. It's where I got my uh, cover page from. Um, I, I don't need a, a, a translation. Okay, so we'll start real quick. Okay, so this is the Komodo blockchain as you can see here. Um, and it's just doing its little things, creating the blocks. It has a one minute block time and the max block size is four megabytes. Um, okay, and they just give you a little, okay, we've been around for a little bit. Uh, it's a hard fork of blockchain, uh, Komodo is, it inherits, inherits everything of blockchain. All right, so uh, um, yeah, it, it talks about the Antara framework, you can link to that and check that out. Uh, it's much more than the aforementioned things, there's much more to see, okay. Um, and then, uh, okay, let's go on to the Komodo blockchain, average proof of block blockchain with an average block time of one minute. Um, Okay, so every minute a new block is mined on one of the nodes of the global decentralized network. And in order to increase the security of the network, Komodo periodically saves the blockchain data to the Bitcoin blockchain. This means an attacker would need to first compromise the Bitcoin blockchain, and that's not going to happen. So here it is. Then it adds a little notary, as I've been talking about for this delayed proof of work. That's the notarization process. That's it. It's that, that simple. By notarizing the block data onto the blo uh, Bitcoin blockchain, Komodo takes advantage of the Bitcoin hash rate security. As soon as the notarization is confirmed, it creates an immutable record of Komodo transactions written onto the Bitcoin blockchain and it prevents those 51 attacks. Um, it's called delayed proof of work. All right. Um, that's not it. It even goes further and uh, it, Bitcoin can provide level of security to other independent blockchains. So here's a little example of this delayed proof of work as a service. So here's all these other blockchains, Game Credits, Einsteinium, and uh, I'm sure Pirate Chain would be on here as well if you uh, are familiar with that. And that's how I found Komodo. And so we'll continue. Um, yeah, they're notarizing onto Komodo blockchain, which is notarizing onto the Bitcoin network. So as you can see, yeah, it's uh, implemented and it's basically renting their delayed proof of work. And as you can see right here, they're taking and they're going on to Komodo security and uh, Oh, I can move this. Okay, and then then it's going to the blockchain uh, Bitcoin security. So, um, so all right. So you can you know, here if you're interested in adopting the delayed proof of work mechanism to secure your blockchain, please contact the Komodo team on their official Discord. Uh, next chapter: scalability. This is uh, their next thing here. Um, it's how it handles scaling. And if you don't know what scaling is, scaling is basically say you're a hot dog vendor and. You, yeah, you, know, you work in the Astrodome if you lived in Houston in the, the 90s and 80s and 70s. Um, and you love those hot dogs, but you wanted to be able to take those hot dogs and sell them to everybody in the United States because you want everybody to know how good those hot dogs at the Astrodome are. Well, uh, the person who makes those hot dogs at the Astrodome has to figure out a way to be able to distribute those hot dogs in the exact same way with that exact same taste and style to everybody else in the world. How are they going to do that? Well, they have to duplicate that type of machinery or whatever they use to make those particular hot dogs, and they have to make it exactly the same on a large basis. So that's what scaling is. I, a lot of people don't know this stuff, and I don't want to assume that people just know everything um, before starting out. Um, let's look at Bitcoin. We know that Bitcoin has a maximum capacity around, so more realistically, somewhere around eight transactions per second. Okay. Uh, the Komodo blockchain can natively handle about 200 transactions per second. Um, let's test and inspect this claim. Uh, right now, we're spending around 100 transactions per second. Let's double it. Let's double that. Let's see how rapidly we fill the meme pool. And the meme pool is the little waiting lounge area uh, where transactions are gathered up before they're added to a block. Um, so. All right, so here's a scaling chain. Let's add another chain on there. Okay, and how is the transaction flow split between two chains? How's it even possible? Learn more. Um, 
The Komodo ecosystem allows all third-party projects to create a scaling chain at any time. Scaling chains validate transactions for the main chain, boosting performance on demand. This is made possible through a technology that Komodo developed called platform synchronizations. What does this mean? Um, it sends a summary of all transactions that occurred since the last notarization to the main chain, which they're attached in this example, the main Komodo chain simultaneously. The main chain shares the data to the scaling chain, which contains data of all previous summaries gathered since the last not notarization. So they basically share summaries of each of those transactions back and forth to each other. Then it gets added and notarized onto the Bitcoin security. So both chains are doing their own thing and they send summaries to each other as far as I can see. Um, and then, at, you know, so they're both able to gather up transactions and then send, see, look, they just shared each other's copies of their uh, transactions back and forth to each other right then. If you missed that back there, uh, let's see if we can catch another one. Um, so now each chain has a record of what happened on the other chain. That way it can validate transactions on any other chain with a unique burn protocol. The blockbuster, uh, the blockchain cluster and <laughs> blockbuster can maintain constant coin supply across the main chain and all scaling chains. Um, so there's no theoretical limit to how many chains you can spin up. So in, the, uh, in 2018, they did a stress test and they processed approximately 20,000 transactions a second. That's huge. That's right up there with Visa. I think Visa is somewhere. Let's see, there it goes right there. They just all shared their information back and forth to each other. Um, so. Um, yeah, and so that's that chapter, and let's go to this next chapter here. Um, oh, that was it. So you, you get the gist, all right? Okay, so let's close this out. Um, so that is delayed proof of work. That's the scaling. That's how all that stuff works. Now, there's one other thing um, that uh, it you can talk about here. Uh, oh, I did want to mention, um, it just this is just a recent development. Um, Komodo has moved off of Bitcoin as their notarization and they've moved on to Litecoin. Um, and there are reasons for this. Um, it's more cost efficient because uh, it was first introduced by founder JL777 uh, in 2016. Uh, the proof of network is by, uh, has worked by using enormous amounts of hash rate on the Bitcoin blockchain network. Um, but uh, it basically, um, they, Bitcoin's getting expensive with its large mass adoption. And so the transactions are getting expected, uh, expensive. That being said, okay, the Bitcoin network is becoming costlier and more congested to make con transactions due to increased demand and limited on-chain scalability. With this in mind, the Komodo team has been exploring how to create a more sustainable future for blockchain security. This ultimately led to a research phase where Komodo team looked at switching to a new blockchain for delayed proof of work cross-chain uh, notarizations. Why they chose Litecoin, cost efficiency, less resource consumption, uh, because people are attacking Bitcoin right now for being a huge waste and proof of work being a waste. I'm not sure I totally believe all that. If you look at all the waste that uh, the Visa network, for instance, creates in the environment and all the entire uh, fiat traditional banking system creates, and uh, even uh, companies like Apple and, and uh, Microsoft, so yeah, it's, <laughs> I think it's a failed argument, but um, anyway, that's just my opinion, man. Um, the high hash rate, um, Litecoin's hash rate is quite high compared to other proof of work based blockchains that have implemented ASIC resistance measures. It's uh, averaging more than 270 terahashes daily. Faster block chimes, of Litecoin has a 2.5 minute block time while Bitcoin has a 10 minute block time. Thus delayed proof of work can now perform cross chain notarizations up to up to four times the speed of before. Mining decentralization, less than 10% of Litecoin mining hash power is uh, still available on marketplaces like NiceHash. That's the way it's practically impossible to even try a coordinated attack on the Litecoin network, the resource. So they're using the Litecoin now instead of Bitcoin. And I know I didn't want to just bog you down at first with all the details of the latest things happening. I wanted to just let, let you know that um, uh, Komodo was basing its security on Bitcoin, and it was, but now they're switching over to Litecoin. Now that you know it, what I'm kind of trying to talk about after I showed you that demo. So, um, and that's, that's a good choice. When you, when you think about um, the two Bitcoins right now, Ethereum and Bitcoin, those are the only blockchains, uh, two Bitcoins, those are the only blockchains right now with traffic issues and congestion issues. 
Um, so it is nice to be able to spread some of that out to some of the other blockchains. And uh, maybe one day they'll soon have their own traffic issues too, just like every major city in the United States. LA and New York, you know, they aren't the only options for terrible traffic. Austin has terrible traffic now, but uh, it wasn't always that way, you know. So just like now, um, there's basically two uh, blockchains with terrible traffic Ethereum and Bitcoin, but hey, you know, Litecoin's probably going to get there fair enough and soon enough as well. Um, and now, okay, it's not only delayed proof of work that um, Komodo offers protection for, there's adaptive proof of work. And this is a whole other type of security mechanism to solve a difficulty stranding hack. Um, so, uh, proof of stake, okay, blockchains do not have inherent security. While major blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum are incred incredibly secure, it's common knowledge that smaller blockchains don't have anywhere close to the same level of protection. If a blockchain's network is small and weak, so that blockchains defend, uh, is, if a blockchain's network is small and weak, so are that blockchain's defenses against malicious attacks. Sorry, that was a mouthful. Uh, proof of stake, blockchains face threats like the nothing at stake problem and weak subjectivity. On the other hand, proof of work blockchains have to worry about the infamous 51% attack. A different, a, a dif difficulty strand attack is when a malicious miners raise a small network's hash rate in cryptocurrency mining to extremely difficult height levels. And then all very suddenly, the, then the malicious actors quickly abandon the le network, leaving it stranded with such a high difficulty that the remaining miners are totally incapable of processing transactions or finding new blocks. And the network gets stuck and the chain is effect effectively brought to a screeching halt. Um, that would basically be like um, uh, a bunch of short people uh, were playing basketball. And uh, then along comes a bunch of tall people that uh, jump into the game and uh, yeah, they're obviously performing a lot better than all the short people in the, in the basketball game. So they raise the goal post higher. And uh, the, the goal of the basketball is way high. And obviously the tall people are able to get up there and uh, you know, make the baskets in and everything else. But then all the tall people suddenly decide that they don't want to play the game. And they're out. But that goal post, that goal, uh, the goal is still, the basket is still way the hell up there. So the tall people are gone, and the short people are still there playing the game, but they can't reach and they can't get in to get the ball into that goal that high. And so that's kind of what is happening here on the adaptive proof of work is uh, people are coming in and um, they're uh, raising the hash rate so high all suddenly, and then the miners, the malicious miners, uh, just completely abandon the network, leaving it stranded with such a high difficulty that the remaining miners are totally incapable of processing transactions or finding new blocks. The network gets stuck and the chain's effectively brought to a screeching halt. So yeah, that's how that is done, but uh, Komodo solves this. Um, proof of work blockchains have a built-in mechanism that detects the network's hash rate. So uh, what Komodo is doing is they are creating a difficulty adjustment algorithm that is coming in to kind of keep the pulse on the hash rate and it will adjust it periodically in order to make sure that all the players have equity. And a lot of people talk right now and that everything going on socially about equality, everybody needs equality. That's not necessarily the case. It's maybe more about equity, uh, making sure something is periodically adjusted to make sure that everything is fair. And that's kind of what this is, hap is happening here uh, with this difficulty adjustment algorithm. The general principle of a difficulty adjustment algorithm is simple. The higher a change hash rate, the more difficult the math problems that miners must find uh, to solve blocks. This ensures that miners aren't finding blocks too quickly, which would be the case if problems were too easy. And it also avoids long periods of time with no blocks at all, which is what would happen if the problems were too hard. Um, so uh, yeah, the, then it explains this down here. Like I said, I'll be putting all this in the, in the, in the sources and the video description. Um, so uh, all this might not be completely clear, so let's use an example. They use Commercium as their example. It's a perfect example because it uses Equihash, a popular hash function with plenty of available hash power. Um, according to Crypto51 app, a whopping 35,000% of entire Commercium's network hash rate is available for rent on the popular hash rental site NiceHash. You could rent more than twice the hash rate of the entire Commercium network for around $10 per hour. Um, so yeah, let's see here. Uh, 
So, okay, let's imagine that miners controlling a mere 10% of the total hash rate of the Horizon network start to decide uh, to, the, to mine Commercium. That means 35 mega hashes would move from Horizon to Commercium, leaving Horizon with a total of 315 mega hashes and boosting Commercium, Commercium from 0.7 all the way up to 35.7. This is an increase of more than 50 times the original hash rate. As a result, the difficulty of finding a block will increase by roughly 50 times, and when the difficulty adjustment um, to the next when the when the DAA next adjusts to the diff network's difficulty level. Now imagine if all those miners who recently joined the Commercium network decided to switch to a different Equihash blockchain, the Commercium hash rate would drop back down to 0.7. But because the difficulty is only adjusted periodically, the network would be stuck very high until the next calibration. Um, so there, it, it basically meaning the miners, uh, the remaining miners on the network. Uh, they don't have enough hash rate to find blocks, and that's difficulty 50 times higher than the original big difficulty. It might take the network several weeks or even a month to find a single damn block at a difficulty level intended for a, net rate, a network with a hash rate of 35.7. That's a differential uh, difficulty strand attack, uh, diff strand attack. After an influx of miner, it causes the blockchain's difficulty to increase by dozens or even hundreds of times over. The miners abandon, abandon the network, leaving it stranded, unable to find the blocks. The network becomes completely incapable of trans processing transaction, and no miner can produce a new block, and no one can send or receive a coin. It basically becomes a zombie chain. It's a devastating attack that smaller blockchain networks have previously not had a way to defend against. That is until Komodo. Uh, so this is all cutting-edge type of stuff, and adaptive proof-of-work fixes this. So, yeah. And then they put in, you know, timestamp protection, block to block stair stepping, exponential decay difficulty adjustments. So yeah, um, yeah, it, more and more detail here. So that's another aspect. Okay, so what else does Komodo have? I mean, it's, that's a hell of a lot of security and scalability and stuff like that. Um, and, and then the interoperability with all these other blockchains being able to add on to it, it immediately makes it all interoperable. Um, there is something called the Atomic Dex. Let's see where I am on time. I, yeah, uh, okay. I'm, I, wow, man, I'm actually doing pretty well. Okay, so um, I may be able to keep this under 30 minutes. Okay, so um, let's enter Atomic Dex. Um, let's go back to the home page. Okay, so there's a marketing roadmap video. has some amazing tribal sounding drum music and stuff on there. Um, uh, let's see here, Atomic Komodo features Atomic Dex. Okay, this is a decentralized exchange. If you don't know what a Dex is, and that means uh, the difference between a, a centralized and a decentralized exchange. Like Binance is a centralized exchange, um, Crypto.com is centralized, Coinbase is centralized exchange, and that means you have to uh, deposit your crypto or buy with fiat your crypto to a centralized exchange and they hold your keys and they hold your crypto in order to be able to do anything and um, uh, they also perform the trade for you and as a result a lot of times some of the benefits of centralized exchanges is you can do uh, trades very cheaply because a lot of times they'll take care of these transaction fees and especially with the way ethereum fees have been lately that might be kind of a benefit but you don't own your crypto. And uh, if something goes wrong or they make some of the decision that doesn't go in your interest and, or if they decide to shut down the network like Coinbase has been known to do, I think maybe 12 times last year, um, Coinbase shut down during bull runs due to their uh, infrastructure not being able to handle it. I mean, come on, they're like a, you know, a couple billion dollar company or I don't know how many, but multi-billion dollar company, but they can't, seem to keep their servers up whenever they see a surge in, uh, in market activity, it doesn't make sense. And so it just reeks of manipulation and um, you're subjected to that whenever you deal with centralized cryptocurrency exchanges. So there is decentralized exchanges and there are a couple types of decentralized exchanges. There are automatic market makers in which people provide liquidity to liquidity pools. So I would provide 10 Ethereum and 10 uh, USDC stable to tokens to a liquidity pool. And as a result, 
I would get a percentage of any transactions between Ethereum and USDC uh, for, be, for providing liquidity. So those coins are available if people want to trade those two coins. Um, say, and then the, the more weird the pair is, let's say you have like, uh, uh, I don't know, Unibright and, uh, and Ren token, all right? And you want to trade those. If you provide liquidity, you would provide an equal amount of Ren and an equal amount of Unibright. And uh, since there's probably not a whole lot of people providing uni, uh, liquidity for those two particular types of tokens, um, you would probably have a higher percentage and you can earn money off of being a liquidity provider. But watch out for impermanent loss. I'm not encouraging anybody that's new to jump in and provide liquidity because it can be a dangerous game. Um, so I'm just letting you know what it is and what an automated, automated market maker is because an automated market maker uses smart contracts um, to tap into that liquidity pool for two people to automatically do a trade without any type of intervening authority or centralized exchange operating on their behalf um, using a market book because they have a market book full of orders that they need to fill and as a third party they are fulfilling those transactions. So that is the difference between a decentralized tra uh, exchange using a, uh, an automated market maker and then a centralized exchange using a, uh, a, 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 an order book to be able to fill those transactions and they do it on your behalf. Now we have an atomic DEX, an atomic swap. Uh, that's a different type of exchange and there's uh, not necessarily an automated market maker liquidity pool on there. It is an automated market maker, uh, I think, uh, but it's done using atomic swaps. Now what's an atomic swap? It's basically a peer-to-peer -peer swap between two people. Um, you can download this onto your desktop. Uh, I think it's available on mobile as well. If you're downloading this in the United States and you want to use the DEX, you've got to be sure to use a VPN. I have a VPN on right now, um, so uh, I am able to use this, but make sure you have that on. Apparently, I'm in Ireland right now. Um, so here is the Atomic DEX. I have it operating and running. I deposited a little bit of Bitcoin in here to try to show you. I have not used this yet, so we're going to see how easy this is, but I'm not really sure. I totally suck at uh, doing anything like this. Um, so. Uh, I've really only used centralized exchanges and some uh, decentralized exchanges like Uniswap and One Inch and stuff like that and Kyber Network and yeah, a few others. Uh, I don't really use. I like. Um, I honestly, most people when they jump in and they see stuff like this, they see graphs like this and uh, all these orders and these pairs and stuff. This is not even that complex looking, um, but it, it's a little scary, you know. Um, so I, I can totally understand that. So, but you kind of get used to it and you get you get comfortable with the the ux and and hold up, and the format and uh yeah you know but um yeah this is the atomic dex and uh um okay so yeah i wanted to go before i jump into the atomic dex i want to go back over here to brave and um where did this go Video display capture. Okay, so turn this off and let's turn Brave back on. Okay, uh, I wanted to define what atomic swap is real quick. Um, so atomic swap is defined. It's a smart contract technology that enables exchange of one cryptocurrency for another without using centralized intermediaries like I had mentioned with Binance and Coinbase and stuff like that. So there's exchanges. Atomic swaps can take place directly between blockchains of different cryptocurrencies um, or they could be conducted off-chain away from the main blockchain. They came into prominence in 27, September 2017 when an atomic swap between Decred and Litecoin was conducted. Uh, there's been several other startups. Uh, Light, uh, Lightning Network for Bitcoin uses atomic swaps, um, so that's one of the most famous examples. Um, so breaking down, the process for exchanging cryptocurrencies is time-consuming and complex. It's due to several reasons. The fragmented nature of today's cryptocurrency ecosystem present, presents several challenges to average traders, and that means a bunch of different type of blockchains uh, in particular. Not all cryptocurrency exchanges support all coins, um, and that's, you know, for instance, Uniswap really focuses on ERC-20 tokens, which is based on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, then Bitcoin and Ethereum, they don't play well together and they don't communicate very well together. So you can't uh, exchange any Bitcoin tokens on uh, Uniswap. You can't exchange Zilliqa on Uniswap, which is a proof of work blockchain. Um, yeah, so 
you can't do a lot of stuff. There are certain specific DEXs and exchanges that uh, carry specific tokens for various reasons. But uh, yeah, say you wanted to buy Pirate Chain. Uh, Pirate Chain is actually kind of tough to get. You have to get Bitcoin and you have to bring it over you know, to... Um, uh, I, 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 can you get Pirate Chain over here? I think so. Anyway, whatever. Uh, basically, a lot of blockchains don't talk well together, and uh, it's hard to get it all centralized in one place. That's what this Atomic Dex is saying it's doing. It's being able to uh, provide you with a bunch of different options. Um, I have set up some of these options on here. You can go through and choose the ones that are relevant to you, and like you can add these tokens. Oh, here, I'll show you in a second. But anyway, I'm going to break down Atomic Softs first. Atomic Softs. Uh, solves this problem through the use of hash time time lock contracts. As the name denotes, HTLC is a time-bound smart contract between parties that involves a generation of cryptographic hash functions. Um, yeah, so let's see where here, uh, which can be verified between them. Atomic swaps require both parties to acknowledge receipts of receipt of funds within a specified time frame using a cryptographic hash function. If one of the involved parties fails to confirm the transaction within the time frame, then the entire transaction is voided and the funds are not exchanges exchanged. Uh, the latter option action helps remove the counterparty risk. Um, so suppose Alice is a trader invested in converting 100 bitcoins to an equivalent Litecoins of Bob. She submits her transactions to Bitcoin's blockchain. During this process, Alice generates a number for a cryptographic hash function to encrypt a transaction. Bob repeats the same process at his end by similarly submitting his transaction to Litecoin's blockchain. And both Alice and Bob unlock their respective funds to their respective numbers. They have to do this within a specified time frame or else the transfer will not take place. And they can be used in conjunction with Lightning Network to conduct off-chain off transactions. And then so here I go into a little definition of what is a hash time, a hash time lock contract. It's a type of smart contract used in blockchain, blockchain applications to eliminate counterparty risk by enabling the implement and implementation of time-bound transactions. In practical terms, this means the recipients of a transaction have to acknowledge payment by generating cryptographic proof within a certain time frame. Time frame. Otherwise, the transaction does not take place. So basically, um, this Atomic Dex that I have up here, let me go into here and bring this back up. Uh, so take down Brave and put back up this display capture. This is a... Uh, uh, atomic swap decentralized exchange so lots of different tokens from tons of different blockchains are available on here and that's not really something that is uh, this is actually something that's very unique for a decentralized exchange I know a lot of centralized exchanges will have blockchains of various um, uh, coins of tons of different blockchains but decentralized exchanges they don't they have coins of one specific blockchain so this makes it unique you can uh, uh, have the luxury of using a decentralized exchange and not having to go through a centralized intermediary but at the same time um, you can uh, interact with several different blockchains so uh, this is not something that I've seen that has been done so far yet anyway um, so yeah, uh, the, using the atomic swap, somebody would go into here, um, they would uh, go to the decks right here, and uh, there's all these order books, and you can jump onto one of these orders. Um, let's see here, I've never done this before, so uh, let's switch this back and forth. I have $39.14 worth of Bitcoin. I'm gonna buy some Komodo. So let's see here, exchange rates, set swap price for evaluation, Orders history. Uh, let's see what other people are doing here. Um, yeah, all this is way too much for me. Um, how many Komodo? All right, so let's do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to use this crap, honestly. Uh, I'm not saying this is crap, but uh, I, I, I need to, I need a little education in how to use these types of uh, atomic swap type of dexes. So I don't think I'm going to be a whole lot of help for you here. Um, what is the current Komodo price here? Let's take a look. Um, let's go back over here to Brave Browser. And let's shut off this display capture. And let's see Komodo price. I mean, I suppose I could look right here. Oops, at a dashboard. And let's go into CoinGecko. KMD, 
and uh, see where it came. It's at two dollars and seventy three cents right now, and um, see if that's available. Two dollars and seventy three cents. That's the price of that. So let's go over here to the decks, and um, let me get this down and this up. Okay, so total USD, total KMD, buy sell, sell Bitcoin, um, price KMD. 2.73 and then the price the volume of Bitcoin uh, what is oh man this is so max uh, okay so all right let's try that and uh, after tradable after fees Bitcoin balance is lower than the minimum trade amount what is the minimum trade amount? Um, so let's try here. Price to MZ, so volume max twenty nine point. I don't think I have enough on here um, to be able to do that. Vol price Oracle powered by Band Protocol. Uh, so I guess the Oracle is powered by Band Protocol. Um, uh, yeah, should be Chainlink, but uh, I'm I'm biased. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. How much Bitcoin do I have? Um, so it'd be interesting. Uh, I, I bet that there's a uh, Atomic Dex tutorial around here somewhere. Um, but I'm coming at it from a complete blank slate. So maybe the Komodo team could benefit from my virgin eyes looking at this and trying to figure out, and then maybe figure out a way to make this easy for anybody to just walk in and do this. But uh, I'm not going to blame the system for my inadequacy here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to figure this out and. Um, create a swap for this Bitcoin I have to Komodo and I'll probably do a little follow-up on here because I don't want to have to sit here and figure this out right here on camera in front of you but it kind of gives you an overall look um, I'm not going to fault my inadequacies for the uh, amazing uh, features of this DEX here so um, yeah and then it looks like you'll be able to add in fiat currency here uh, fairly soon I guess that's a, a feature that's going to be implemented it says coming soon um, so that's pretty cool, man. Um, overall, I think this is a really cool Dex um, with a good uh, layout. I just have to not be an ignoramus and figure it out. Here you can go into here and add all these assets. I mean, look at all these assets that are available. So <laughs> it's a buttload. Um, so yeah, I, I only added the assets that I thought were um, relevant to me. And uh, yeah, so. Anyway, yeah, I'll dig into that later and um, you know, come back to that. But uh, let's go back over here to um, this website and let me get this up so I can, oops, wrong one. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. All right, so, oops, I don't need to go to this YouTube video. I don't need to hear about Russell Brand and Jordan Peterson right now. Okay, so, um, so the difficulty stranding. Um, talks about light clients. So I was researching that. Oh yeah. So let's go into where can you buy this? Um, there's the atomic decks. There's a Komodo wallet. Um, I started off using Auber wallet as my first wallet whenever I first got into cryptocurrency in, in late 2018 and I bought XRP and, and Dogecoin. And, uh, yeah, since then I've sold those and I bought Bitcoin with it. I didn't want to buy Bitcoin immediately starting off as a new because I didn't want to just buy 0 0.001 Bitcoin and stuff like that. I wanted to buy a whole one and I couldn't afford it. Um, but since then I've learned better and I know better. And, uh, you know, obviously been stacking sats since then. So, um, and I've gotten rid of my Doge and XRP. <laughs> so the Atomic Wallet, I use Atomic Wallet as well. Um, you can put it on your Trezor, um, your Ledger, if you want to do cold storage, uh, Komodo Paper Wallet, and these others that I don't know anything about, the Varus, Coin Collect, and the Zellcore. All right, cool, man. Um, so it's available on those. Um, let's see where else, what, what else we have here that I've kind of stored up here as tabs. Oh, they have an amazing uh, developer academy. I think I'm going to take part in this. Um, I've put in my email. Um, if you don't know anything about blockchain and you want to start out here, this is a maybe a good option for you. Um, so let's go take a look at this developer academy. 
And uh, right here, um, on April 29th, 2021, this is delighted to announce the launch of Komodo Developer Academy. Our program aims to create a path for aspiring blockchain developers to hone their skills by getting hands-on experience in the blockchain select sector. Why Komodo Developer Academy? Getting started in blockchain space and continuing to build your skills can be an arduous journey without a clear path. Komodo aims to solve this by introducing a series of how-to guides in an immense course. Unlike many other online courses that require you to go through paywalls and don't include community support, Komodo is following a much different approach. It's 100% free and uh, basically uh, they just offer a bunch of materials for you to go through. Um, then you can sign up to get a little bit deeper into it and gain an instructors and all that type of stuff and kind of go under a tutorial internship type of process. And then, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a great and uh, amazing way for somebody to jump in and get involved from the start and then maybe get a, a mentor through that, through this immersive study group and a junior development program. Um, so, yeah, it's a great way for them to hire <laughs> internally in a way. Uh, so kudos to them. Um, and then here's where they had their recent notary node election that I was talking about earlier about how they, uh, they um, nominate um, new nodes to keep the rotation going. And there's the winners. So they just did that. And then uh, let's take a quick look at this BPSAA I was talking about, this, this consortium of um, uh, companies and blockchains and projects all banding together to promote the uh, vision of blockchain privacy, security, and adoption, especially that's been so prevalent in our uh, state that is becoming ever more a surveillance state. So uh, yeah. Um, this is a group that promotes all that, and uh, here's their, they have a webinar, a spring webinar. Where is their website? Uh, let's see here, um, BPSAA, okay. Let's go in here. I use start page for all my func uh, search functions because I don't want to give Google any more uh, traffic than they already get. And uh, I don't want to be told what I should be looking at. Instead, I want to be given the options, I think. So blockchains, privacy, security, and adoption alliance, innovation through collaboration. And so they, you know, Pirate Chain is one of the main um, uh, members on here. But uh, we support the EFA and its uniting principles. We believe technology support the intellectual freedom at the heart of a democratic society in the digital age that entails advancing the following. Free expression, security, privacy, creativity, and access to knowledge. And I do believe the Komodo blockchain lives up to all this. Here's some of the partners, BitTube, Pirate Chain. I'm on BitTube as well. This video will be on BitTube and the Turtle Network, which is another um, exchange as well. Um, Etho Protocol, and it's its own blockchain. And uh, let's see who else we have. Uh, Burst, Ergo, Sentinel. It's a decentralized VPN. Um, Komodo. Um, Etho protocol. Okay. All right. So I've gone through all those and you can read more about that here. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for, for today. Uh, I think I've kind of given an overall, uh, blanket look at all this stuff and sorry for my ignorance on the atomic deck. You know, I try, so <laughs> I'll work on more on my, my, um, exchange skills and stuff like that on how to learn how to navigate my way through that stuff. Um, anyway, yeah. So you guys have a good day. Um, be nice to each other. Be nice to me. Give me feedback in the comments and anything like that. And if there's anything I can help with, let me know. Um, I will do my due diligence, like I said, and learn more about the um, uh, the atomic decks. And um, if there's anything I left out that was like absolutely crucial, let a brother know. Um, I, I try my best, but uh, I don't really, you know, so I, sometimes I say some completely inaccurate things or don't, you know, say or leave out something important. All right, man. Well, I will talk to you guys later. I'm actually getting ready to do my morning show. All right, bye. <laughs>